Hello, welcome to NCCTI. I'm Mark Cartwright and I will guide you through this gas piping lesson. Today's lesson is gas pipe sizing using the longest length method. This presentation is based on the 2009 North Carolina Fuel Gas Code. You will need this code book and a calculator to follow along. Keep in mind the longest length method is used by the board examiners on their contractor exams. This method oversizes the gas lines a little. You probably do not want to use this method on a large commercial job, but works fine for residential purposes. Here's a simple gas plan that we'll be using to size the gas piping. Take note of the upper left hand corner. Gas is natural inlet pressure less than 2 psi, pressure drop 0.5 inches in water column and specific gravity is 0.6. We're also using schedule 40 metallic pipe. You'll use this information to find the correct table. Here is the five step process to determine the pipe size. Number one, determine the maximum demand. Just add up the individual gas appliances BTU per hour input rating. Number two, determine the longest run of pipe. Number three, select the correct table. There are 37 gas tables. This is the most time consuming. Find the right table and you're halfway home. Number four, locate the gas demand figures in the table. And number five, locate the nominal size of pipe. To determine the maximum demand, simply add up the individual appliances BTU input. On a contractor's exams, if you're missing a value, simply go to table 402.2 on page 26. For example, a single family hydronic boiler has a BTU input rating of 100,000. The maximum demand for this gas piping lesson is 297,000 BTU. For this lesson, to, to determine the longest run, simply add up the numbers in red. The correct answer is 90 feet. Once the longest run has been determined, this figure is used to identify the correct row in the table. More on this later. When selecting the correct table, just make sure you match up the following. Specific gravity, gas pressure, pressure drop, type of material, whether it's steel, copper, CSST, and any special conditions. Our drawing has the following values. Gas is natural. Inlet pressure less than 2 psi. Pressure drop 0.5 inches in water column. Specific gravity is 0.6 and we're using schedule 40 metallic pipe. So what is the correct table? The correct table is table 402.2 parentheses 2 located on page 27. In this exercise I made it easy. Do not expect the board examiners to do the same. Here is the correct table used in our lesson. The following slides will explain how this table works. All the information in red is used to identify the correct gas piping table. In this lesson, 90 feet is the longest run. So you come down on the left, go down to 90. Just remember, this row is used to size all the gas pipe in this lesson.
the last thing I want to mention about reading these tables is that all the values located below maximum capacity in cubic feet of gas per hour you need to add three zeros to. Uh, they deleted three zeros just to make it easier to read. It is now time to size all the gas piping lines in this lesson. Our longest run is 90 feet. Just remember all BTUs per hour values will be selected from this row. Here is where the longest run, 90 feet, is applied to the table. I have the 90 foot row highlighted. The main thing to remember, once you determine the longest run, you never leave that row. You size all your pipe in the system from this row. Now let's size line A. If you look at line A in the diagram, you'll see that it has to carry the whole system load, 297,000 BTUs. So let's go to the table and size line A. Now we're going to size line A. We go down to the 90 foot row. We go across horizontally until we find a figure that's greater than or equal to 297,000 BTU. So 297,000 is greater than 207,000 and less than 424,000. 424,000 is the figure to use. We go straight up vertically and it's inch and a quarter pipe. Now we're going to size section B. Section B has to be able to carry 72,000 BTU. Notice section B is only 10 foot long. We're still going to get our values from the table from the 90 foot row. Keep that in mind. Section B is ready for 72,000 BTU input. Back to the 90 foot row. 72 is greater than 52 but less than 110. Going vertically which equals 3 quarter. Now we'll size section C. Section C has got to be able to carry the furnace, the gas log, and the range. A couple ways you can do it. You can subtract 297,000 from 72,000. Or you can simply add up the range, gas log, and furnace, which equals 225,000. So section C has to be able to carry 225,000 BTU. Using the same process, we started the 90 foot column. We go over until we get something greater than 225,000. Here again, it's the inch and a quarter pipe. We will now size pipe lines E, F, and G. The only thing to remember is E has to carry both the range and the gas log. Going back to the gas table, you will see that E and F are both three quarter inch pipe and G would be half inch. Let's do a quick review of the five step process. Number one, determine the maximum demand. Just add up all the input BTU per hour. Number two, determine the longest run. Use this value to determine all the gas pipe sizes. Number three, select the correct table. Probably the most important, make sure all the numbers match up, such as the type of gas, pressure drop, etc. Four, locate the gas demand figures that is located in the longest length row. Number five, locate the nominal size of pipe by finding a BTU value greater than or equal to that is located on the longest length row. I think you'll agree that the longest length method it's pretty simple and straightforward. NCCTI exists to serve the contractor community. If you have any questions, comments, or any feedback at all, just email us at info at We appreciate your time.